Now there are many things in the gardening world that are quite as satisfying as growing your very own perfectly straight carrot. Now it sounds nice and easy. Put some carrot seeds in the compost, off they go, until you come to harvest them and you pull them up and you've got lots of weird and wonderful knobbly bobbly split legged funny looking carrots. But today with the help of my carrot bed back here and there's been some chat about this recently in gardening circles about how I grow my carrots, how I managed to get success and grow those nice big long carrots. But what I'll do is I'll run through what I'm going to do this year. I'll tell you everything I do to get those nice big long lovely straight carrots. Now first things first, most of the effort that I put in when growing big long straight carrots was in the creation of this. So at the very start, about two years ago, when I created this bed specifically for the carrots, this is when all the time and effort went in. Every single year after that, year after year, it takes next to no maintenance, next to no effort, maybe half an hour to get this all prepped and sorted, include the seeds sown and all that sort of stuff to get the carrots on the go. Now, if you don't have all this sort of stuff knocking about, you can replicate this in something as simple as one of these 30 litre buckets. Do the buckets that you use for the potatoes, going the potatoes in, they are also perfect for carrots. You can do exactly the same thing I'm gonna do in here in one of these buckets. As always, with all this stuff, whether it's the mesh, whether it's the buckets, whatever, I'll chuck some links down below in the description. You can go off, you can have a look, you can see what all the bits and pieces are and decide what is right for you. And speaking of what is right for you, this I'm gonna show you today, this is just the way I do it. If, if you watch 20 YouTube videos on how to grow carrots, you'll get 20 different ways of doing it. Everybody's got their own way of doing it, their own ideas. What I'm showing you here is what works for me. This works year after year. I've had no bother with it. It's been absolutely marvellous. We keep the flies off. We do all sorts of stuff like that. And it's blooming great. And I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a faff out of all the things over the allotment, all the things that grow, with the exception of maybe the polytunnel over there. This is probably my other pride and joy, my biggest pride and joy. Never mind the onions or the garlic or the potatoes or whatever else. It's the carrots that are the real showstopper. Anyway, let me take you through exactly what we've got here. So at the bottom here, these are palette collars. So I've got two of them, so it's double height. So we've got two palette collars. On top of that, I've created a sort of hoop house, sort of lid as you'd call it. And all it is, four bits of wood to make a rectangle the same size as the palette colours below. Two bits of this sort of water pipe that go on top and the most important bit is this on the top here. This is called EnviroMesh and the main reason we use EnviroMesh on the carrot bed is that's to stop the carrot root fly and it is a tiny 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 little microscopic fly that if you use the sort of I don't know if you can quite see the green netting that I've got over there. If you use that sort of scaffold netting, the debris netting, the holes on it are too big and the carrot flies can get through. And they come through and what happens? The flies lay their eggs in the carrots, the maggots hatch, they burrow into the carrots and they start eating the inside of the carrots. And you, most of the time you don't even know it's happened till you pull the carrot out of the ground. You think, oh, I've got an amazing carrot. And you cut it up and there's all these little squiggly maggoty things in there. All the inside has been eaten. It is horrible. So invest in a little bit of this just to protect your carrots. Again, same with this, same with the buckets. You can just put a bit of EnviroMesh or whatever over the top. It'll replicate that exactly. The other thing is, it, it said, now, it, you know, the carrot fly, it doesn't really fly much. It can generally only get about two feet high. And everybody's always like, oh yeah, as long as it's two feet high, it'll be fine. But as most places in the world, we do in here in Scotland, we have something called the wind. And even today, it's a little bit windy. And these tiny little microscopic flies, even though they just jump to sort of two foot high, the wind will take them higher. So please don't assume that you can just put your bucket, you know, a little bit higher up and it'll be fine. Do the right thing, use EnviroMesh, cover them up. The other bit, let me, let me take the hoop house off. And I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll bring the camera over and we'll just have a little bit of a closer look at what's inside here. So I've mentioned how the bed was built, how it's all been sort of put together. And I've got videos on how I did this and how I built the lid. I'll put some links at the end or you'll find them in the description down below. By all means, go and have a look. The thing that probably really took the time with all this is this, and that's the compost that's in here. Now this is bagged compost, so I bought quite a lot of bagged compost to begin with to put it in here. And it has all been through a soil mill. Now I'll show you the mill in just a moment now. Every single grain of compost 
in this bed has been through the soil mill and the reason for that is to get a really fine tilt and you can probably see that there there's next to no lumps and bumps no stones no bits of wood things like that this here is probably like the biggest sort of lump you get in there and because it's been through the mill because it's so loose you can just pretty much crumble it between your fingers like that and it just disappears so the carrots when they're growing down shouldn't really hit anything any lumps and bumps i mentioned before about the funny legged carrots where they all go off in different directions that's probably because they're hitting lumps and bumps or stones or things in the soil that's causing the fork off in different directions so what else have i got in here so this isn't all compost only about 50 percent of this mix in this bed is compost this maybe is around about uh, i don't know 20 to 30 percent of it is sharp sand so when i first put it together mainly the lower layers is all mixed in with sharp sand so about 20 to 30 percent sharp sand and then on top of that in the higher up layers when i've been topping the bed up over the years i've mixed perlite in with the compost so again maybe it's 15 to 20 percent of this mix at the top here that's these little white flecks that you can see in there all these little white bits in there that's bits of perlite and again the whole reason for that is is it just breaks up the compost it stops it becoming sort of claggy and clumped together into big lumps and it just means it's nice and airy and light for the carrots growing down nice and straight let's move on from this and let's actually get some carrot sown in this bed so before we actually sow the carrots in the bed and it's my sowing technique that's actually been a bit of a topic of discussion recently in the gardening circles about how i do it like you see i've had success with it some people may have copied me recently looking at you tony smith but again i'll put a link to tony's video and you can go and see what he's done so we'll see how this works so this is the soil mill right there's not much to it it's a big great sort of thing at the bottom and you turn the handle and there's a bar inside that pushes the compost through the grate at the bottom but it takes out any little lumps and bumps and stones and you know some of the compost these days especially the peat free ones there's a lot of wood in them because of how they're produced how they're made that's been a little bit controversial recently as well you know that if any of you watch the potty mouth gardening club We've all been chatting recently about the Melcourt Silver Grow. It's a, it's a compost that's very popular. We love using it. It's very good for seeds. This maybe is a little bit issue with it this year. I don't know yet. I've got a bit of an experiment coming up. So is GB. So we've been chatting in the background about doing a bit of an experiment, doing some composting and seeing how things come on against each other. So watch out for that video coming in the future. But this really is all there is to it for milling the, milling the compost. And the one thing I would say about this if you're going to sieve the compost or soil or you're going to put it through a mill don't do it when it's wet when it's wet it'll clog up the grate at the bottom and you'll be stood there and you'll be turning the handle and no compost will be coming through the bottom and i've learned that through bitter experience let me get this finished off i'll get all the compost i need we'll come back and we'll show you that carrot seed sowing technique now we're getting down to the business end of things here. So the bed needs a little bit of prep ready for the air ahead. One thing I do, this is traditionally, this is a no dig bed, so I don't dig it. What I will do though, is I will get the hori hori knife out and I will slide it in different places around the compost. And what I'm feeling for is anything that might have clumped together through the winter over there when it's rained and snowed and what have you just feeling for anything that might have clumped and if there's some big clumps i will just lift them up and sort of run them through my fingers and break them up again apart from that milling a bit of compost to top it up with once you put the seeds in not a lot else speaking of seeds that is another important thing here i've got two different types here one of which i will swear by and that is a sweet candle it's quite important to have really good carrot seeds and i think carrot seed it's one of those seeds you should buy fresh every year. So buy a new seed every year. And this one here, Sweet Candle, what a brilliant variety of carrot. Absolutely wonderful. Great taste, great look, great colour. And this is the one here that I'm going to try again for the first time this year. It's called Touchon. And that was recommended from Jesse Plot 37 but I swear by Sweet Candle. Now for, for sowing the seeds, I'm going to use, I guess what you would technically call, a broadcasting technique but you know for the rest of us i'm going to sprinkle them over the bed now you might see a lot of stuff a lot of people traditionally they'll make a drill all the way along the bed they'll sprinkle the carrot seeds in cover it up all nice and nice and gently and i'm having a bit of trouble getting into the packet there we go i'm in the packet 
But I saw Monty, Monty Don, a couple of years ago, I saw Monty Don do this with his seed. And he just sort of broadcast, sowed his carrots. And he was going on about it. And, you know, I, I was watching it, I thought, no way, no way does that work. That, that looks rubbish, that's never going to work. And I gave it a try. And I've never looked back since. It was brilliant, honestly. What, what, a, what a great way to do carrots. And it saves you a whole load of hassle. Now, carrot seed is quite small and quite light. And it is a little bit windy here today, so I'm going to be sowing it quite close to the soil. But I'm not going to be putting it in nice, neat drills. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be sprinkling the seed from between my fingers, like this, all the way over the bed. And some people might be feeling a little bit uncomfortable with this because they're not a nice little, little neat drills. I guess the thing about the, the neat drills is it, it, it helps you identify where the weeds are. Um, but because this, this bed is, I wouldn't say there's no weeds in it, I have taken some weeds out of it already this morning, first thing, is it's, it's a pretty clean bed. The EnviroMesh does a really good job, again, of keeping the weed seeds out of it. So generally, the only things growing in here is carrots. And when I'm broadcasting them, I am trying to, to spread them out and space them out quite well so they're not all sort of clumped up in one one big bit and I will I will come back to this in a in a couple of weeks time there once once things have germinated once I've started coming up I will thin these out so I'll look for you know ones that are growing too close to each other and whatnot they haven't got enough room we'll we'll just thin them out Mench, speaking of thinning out thinning out be careful when you're thinning out when you're pulling those tops up of the carrots it releases the odor and that's what attracts the carrot root fly because it can smell it from wherever it is and it'll come looking for it. So watch out for that when you thin them out. The only other thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a good sprinkling of this compost and because it's good, because it's a different color slightly to the one underneath, I can see where I've done it. And I'm gonna use all this compost that's in the wheelbarrow there. That's maybe about half a wheelbarrow full of compost. I'm gonna scatter that all the way over the top. We'll give it a good watering in and that should be a dump. But I'll be back with you in just a jiffy and we'll see how things are looking. And that's it, just about done. So, you know, it is, I, I wanna show you something actually, just bear, bear with me a minute, I just wanna show you something in a minute. It is pretty much done. There's not much to it, is it? It's a little bit of a faff. It takes a little bit of time to get set up. But overall, I mean, it's not complicated. There's only four ingredients. Well, if you include the carrot seed, there's four ingredients in there. We've got sharp sand, we've got perlite, we've got compost and we've got the carrot seed. That's all that's in there. And I guess if you want to see if it works or not, please think about subscribing and you can come back in a few months time when the carrots have grown. And you can either see me looking like a fool as I pull out ridiculous looking carrots, or you can see that it actually works and I pull out really good carrots. Now the one bit, like I say, that is most of the faff is about sieving the compost or putting it through the mill or whatever. Let me just show you why I do that. And this is just a off the shelf sort of bog standard peat free compost. And I'm just trying to, you know, things like this. And let me see, I can hear bits hitting the bottom of the bucket, big lumps and bumps, but let me show that. That's all a bit, there's a lot of stringiness in there, a lot of coir in there. And I, that, I guess that's one of the main ingredients, isn't it? In, in peat-free compost the other day. And speaking of which, there was a brilliant, look at that bit there, there was a, a brilliant segment on Beech Grove Garden the other night where one of the lecturers from Scotland's Rural College came along and did a bit of a demonstration about how peat-free compost is made, just generally the different ingredients that go into it. Go and have a look, you'll find it on BBC iPlay, it's absolutely fascinating. And there's a big old chunky sort of bit of wood and it's really hard, I can't break that down with my fingers, it's solid. It almost feels like a stone, it's not a stone, I can see there's a bit of, a bit of wood, a bit of bark or something that's not quite broken down, but you don't want that in your carrot beds. Anyway, that's me done. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.